Urban Wrestling Federation. That's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this album with Steve the Hustler. And every UWF show is a it's a mind fuck because there's 47 things going on at once and you don't know what 46 of them are. Steve the Hustler was having a meeting with the crew in the ring. In the ring. About making money. I got to talk about this. Go go for it. I actually got the uh, the DVD of this pay-per-view. And uh, it opened with uh, three of the... Um, what are those things? Hype hype videos? Three of the hype videos that ended up online. It's, it opened up with those. And then it had a, a Steve the Hustler had a, had a speech that he was giving all of the, the wrestlers. I actually don't know if this aired on the pay-per-view or not. I hope it did. But for those of you that didn't see it, and I know there are a few of you, for those of you that didn't see it, what happened was Steve the Hustler, who uh, is the former uh, Steve Carroll from ECW, Steve the Hustler is uh, in the ring, and he's got a long gray ponytail. He looks like He looks like an old Paul Heyman, kind of. He looks like Paul Heyman's weird old uncle. Yeah, like his his crazy uncle. Uh, anyway, Steve the Hustler is in the uh, the deal, and he's he's giving a speech to all the guys. And, uh, <laughs> they um they have shots of all the uh, wrestlers uh, as he's giving this speech, and they all looked like they were half asleep. They all looked bored out of their mind. By uh, Steve the Hustler's uh, deal. Did you see the picture that Jericho sent out during the Twitter meeting? Yes, they looked exactly like this. Actually, they look much more bored. <laughs> yeah. So Steve has given this uh, speech, and for the love of God, I have no idea what he was talking about. But I do know he was talking about how this was all about... He said, when the UWF started, we started this thing for that money. It's all about the money. He said, it's not about how many women you bang or whatever. It, it's only about the money. And I'm like, hold on a second, Steve. I've watched all these UWF shows, and, and it often is about the woman you're banging. It is, granted, about the money, but it's about a lot more than that as well. So I think, I'm not positive, but I think he wanted to make it clear that it was all about the money, and it had to be about business, and it couldn't be personal. And I think he was saying, if you have to kill someone in the Urban Wrestling Federation, make sure it's for the right reasons. Business, not personal. Am I missing anything? You work harder at watching Urban Wrestling Federation than I do. I have to. I have to try and figure out what's going on. It's my job. Well, theoretically, it should be my job, too, but I don't care. I watch a segment and I think, I don't know what's going on here. Well, I watch that. I do that a lot as well. Hmm. But to me, it's like the very next segment, for example, when they open up the show and there's a bunch of dudes having meetings, uh -huh. the audio is awful. Oh, God, yes. So sometimes it's like, even if I try, I know I'm not going to be able to figure out what's going on because I can't hear them. I see. So that's when I just, it doesn't, you know, I just ignore it. Mm -hmm. But if it's a segment that I can actually hear, then I listen. Because then I figure, well, maybe I will figure out what's going on. Right. So this, Poor I tried to figure out. Boy. This one, I spent my time trying to figure out what the hell Steve Carroll was talking about here. But the next couple of segments with uh, with random guys uh, jaw jacking each other, there's a lot of mumblers in the UWF. A lot of men mumble, and they mumble, and they're not mic'd well. So I have absolutely no earthly idea what they're saying. There are some guys, I think, teasing a fight in a subway, by which I mean the transportation area, not the sandwich shop. Actually, either would have worked. Yeah, fair. Uh, some other guys hanging out in maybe what appeared to be a club after hours or something. Some girl put her boobs in the camera. The best part of that. We got like six segments of this. We then had a four-way. Facade versus Joker versus Grim Reefer versus Cage. The stakes for this match, the winner would We're receive... High. <laughs> the winner would receive... Quote, a shitload of money. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Yes. The final participant in this four-way matchup. What a shitload of money on the line, boys. So, uh, all of the, each wrestler represents a rapper. One of these guys was out there representing Go 
Gunplay. Gunplay far and away the best thing about the UWF. Oh, yeah. He was a standout on this program. I think uh, I think uh, that one guy, um, what's his face, the commentator? Julius Smokes? Julius Smokes. I think Julius Smokes called him the MVP of the UWF, which is, in fact, a true statement. The, the closest thing I can compare him to, if Charles Crazy Horse Bennett didn't fight, <laughs> he just hung out and was all nutty, he would be gunplay. But a huge wrestling mark. Yeah. Yeah. So He's actually a cross between, between uh, Crazy Horse Bennett and Mike Tyson. All right. Yeah, that works. That works. So he's out there being awesome. Did you see Mike Tyson's tweet today? Uh, I I didn't, which is funny because I actually follow him on Twitter. But I cannot wait for WrestleMania, is what it said. Yay! <laughs> he's so happy. Yes. So uh, they did a thousand and one high spots, including, no joke, the safest stacked up superplex spot ever. Yeah. I have never seen a stacked up superplex executed so effectively yes. as I did on this show. With no one... Like, literally killed. no one was in danger at all. It went off perfectly. Yes. If it always looked like this, they should do this more often. But it never looks like this. So, uh, Grim Reefer, his gimmick apparently is that he will do high spots. He's a dead smoker. Yeah. He is. He, he's like, he is a zombie smoker. Because he will do spots and uh, he will do them with as little enthusiasm as possible without just fucking them up. Like he went he, up the top, he went. He he did a uh, flip off the top rope, in which he did not even actually jump. Yeah, that was the most amazing thing. He <laughs> somehow he did a springboard senton, but he caught no air. Yes, he managed to stand on the top rope, and instead of propelling himself up and forward, he managed to just go straight down. But he still did a full rotation. Yes, I don't even know how this was physically possible. Yes. He did a few other things like spinning kicks and a dive off the apron, and they they were similarly uh, uh, half-assed. And and his facial expression is also completely stone blank at the time. So they, he, that by the way was the highlight. So Joker, I, I was actually annoyed by this, but then it made sense. It was a four-way match, and also falls count anywhere. So Joker and Reefer brawl outside onto the street. I actually thought this was an awesome creative finish. Joker and Reefer brawl outside on the street. Meanwhile, Facade and Cage are doing a high spot in the ring. In the middle of this high spot, Joker pins Reefer. Outside. Outside. So it kind of annoyed me because they couldn't even time that right. But there's a point to this. Shortly thereafter, Facade pinned Cage in the ring. You see, this is not supposed to be an elimination match. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be first pin wins. And even though one pin very clearly came first to us watching at home, this is the UWF. Well, they, false count anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's UWF. Well, no, my point, Brian, they do not have instant replay. The refs did not actually know which of these pins occurred first. Mm. So both men claimed victory. Both referees thought their man had won. They could not decide, so they decided to settle it by having these two dudes wrestle. They did a lot of stupid, stupid stuff. Facade hit some kind of wacky tornado DDT through a table for the win. Mm-hmm. That's fine. He was, uh, yeah. The uh, everyone was very concerned. All the uh, uh, rappers and wrestlers and honeys in attendance looked over. One of the honeys had a fine ass. Julia Smokes pointed this out to us at home on comment at, uh, 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 at home on our couches. He was on commentary. Look at that ass. I believe he said. Oh my god! That might be a shot of the night right there. And then they cut to the announcers. Two of them were looking at the camera, talking about the show. Julius Smokes had his back almost turned to the camera with his phone out, getting a picture of the ass. Yep. Yeah. More meetings with more people mumbling. The only thing I get, got out of this is that G's, her old buddy G's, he had been fucking with somebody's pussy. It's the kind of thing that happens in the Open Wrestling Federation. So, we had Mac versus G's. It's apparently the same Monster Mac from the early days of Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this match very strongly resembled professional wrestling, which is strange on an Urban Wrestling Federation show. I actually thought it was really good until about uh, halfway through when uh, Monster Mac completely blew up. Yes. He was so tired. 
He's large. Gigantic. He's also strong. Uh, he grabbed... The first thing they did, he like, he grabbed G's by the throat and legit with one arm lifted him up for a chokeslam and held him up there. Now, G's is not, uh, you know, broad as clay, but still. He held him up with one hand for a few for a few seconds and then uh, it turned out G's did not take this chokeslam. He raked his eyes or whatever and got out, but they had a match. Then... Mac got totally blown up, and then Joker interfered, and Mac won with the uh, Bam Bam Bigelow style pile driver. It was fine. My notes here for the next bit read: This is a direct quote, mumbling and shouting. It was some of that, yes. It's a full sentence. So then we had a quite a deal. There's three announcers: There's Julia Smokes, another black guy, another white guy, Robbie Moreno. All right. So, uh, Julia Smokes apparently said about something else, he, he referred to something as cheese on a cracker. Robbie Moreno, the white man, was greatly offended at this racial slur. Yes, he was. He could not believe that Julia Smokes had used the word cracker. How he could be so insensitive. Smokes is not even looking at him. He, uh, I believe he said there's... It's just, it's just, he said something about this ca- there's Caucasians all over this room. None of them care. Calm the fuck down. Which was, by the way, accurate. But, Robbie Moreno was having none of this. He dove across the table. A brawl with Julius Smokes broke out. And you were apparently a fan of this brawl. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was great. I mean, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with the announcers. But, um, I've seen a lot of pull-apart brawls. And we see them in TNA all the time. And it's like, two guys get to fight. And they fight forever. And finally, geeks come out to break it up. And you're like, well, where were you geeks earlier? And they do a lame job pulling them apart. And uh, and then, you know, they the guys start brawling again. And it goes on too long. And then the geeks try and pull them apart. And it always looks so fake and contrived. And, uh, and this one, um, I, listen, I would say with 99% certainty that this was a work. But the very fact that I'm not just saying outright that it was a work, that's that's pretty impressive for them to pull this off. I can tell you that uh, I assume it is a work because A, it aired, B, they had footage of everything. But I can tell you that uh, if this was a work, they would have told almost nobody because uh, there are a lot of guys in the UWF who had absolutely no idea what was going on, and they thought they were really breaking up a fight. They were going in there to save lives, and uh, that's why it came off so wild. So I don't really know exactly what this whole thing was. Uh, I guess we'll find out at uh, whatever the next pay-per-view is. But um, there were certainly people that that, uh, that were there that thought, oh my God, these guys are fighting over a dude saying cracker on the UWF pay-per-view. And they were really trying to break it up. So there you go. I'm a thousand percent certain it was a work. Mm. Main event. Beast Ortiz versus Slim. It is bizarre to me that Beast Ortiz has improved in the UWF since his days in WWE and developmental. He is better now than he was then. You mentioned he's been training with Dave Batista's gym. He was, you know, the uh, ex-football player with an afro with a towel. It was all he ever did on, on WWE TV. Now, he shaved off the afro. He is a big ripped tattoo guy who uh, wrestles a, 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 almost a, a Ring of Honor, Davey Richards MMA style. And then he will bust out super athletic high spots like a shoulder block and stuff where he just, just knock the fuck out of the guy. Beast Ortiz rules. Sadly, Slim does not. Match really wasn't much. Highlight was still Julius Smokes, who had returned to the commentary desk. The white man had not. Julius was uh, trying to do his job, but was also upset with you know the fight that had just happened. Including this dialogue as, quote, I want my money so I can get the fuck out of here. Words, by the way, that have been said on literally every wrestling show of all time. So, finally, they paid Julius Smokes. And then we got my favorite shot of the entire show, even better than the ass earlier. We see the announce desk. We see the one guy doing his job. 
We see Julia smokes with a giant wad of cash, counting it out. And meanwhile, over his shoulder, there's a match going on. I want a gift of this. If any of you gift makers actually bought this show, please make me a gift of Julia Smokes counting his money. <laughs> so, Julius was paid. He was paid uh, all he was owed. And suddenly, he became quite, he became quite apologetic. That was awesome. <laughs> if I knew how much these announcers made, I'd have tried out. I guess so. Yes. He made some. He made some. Some. Uh, yeah, some cheddar. Yeah. So, uh, Slim won the match. I don't even remember how. It doesn't matter. But uh, the important thing here is that Slim, as we mentioned, all the wrestlers are representing rappers. Slim represents gunplay. Yay! So we got to see gunplay grab the belt and throw a party. Gunplay is awesome. You know, had the show ended right here, I've been a lot happier with it. <laughs> But sadly, we got like 20 more seconds. And in those 20 seconds, it fell all to shit. Ah, come on. All I can tell you is that apparently somebody's car was stolen and some guys threw something into water. I, I, Horseman presumed it was a gun. Sure. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Just the stuff that... When UWF is bad TV, it is impossibly bad. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the Which whole, is most uh, of the time, by the way. The whole gun thing. Whatever happened to Robbie Moreno? What's the next pay-per-view called? Turf War. Turf War! I wonder if I could do an announcer versus announcer brawl down the road. Was Rashi Brown shot on the last show? Yeah, he's, he remember, was killed. I remember he was killed. Well, yeah. I don't remember if he was shot or not. Yeah, they shot him at point blank in the head. That's right. <laughs> yes. uh, to open the show. Yeah. That's right. Yes, so perhaps this is the gun they used to shoot Rashi Brown. I figured that when they pulled the guy out of the car, they shot him, and then they had to get rid of the gun. I just hope that I it was. Know. I just hope that it was all business. <laughs> yes, Because yes. if it gets personal, Steve the Hustler is not going to be happy. Will not get his way. No, it wouldn't be good for the image of the UWF. Oh my god, that might be the shot of the night right there.